Welcome back to another episode of how to build a PC in a specific case. And that case today is by SSUPD or SUP. And the case is called the Meshalicious. Meshalicious. Yeah, that's quite the, uh, the name. Um, anyways, it's a small form factor, mini ITX tower case that, as you guess, is made out of entirely mesh. And we're going to go through this today and I'm going to explain how to build a PC in this case specifically. Now, just so I clarify something, this is not how to build a PC entirely. I'm not going to tell you how to install your CPU, your RAM, etc. No, it's how certain components go into this PC case specifically that are unique to this. And that's what I try to point out and highlight. So with that said, let's move on and explore the case. Okay, to get ourselves oriented with the case, we're gonna start out with the front IO. The front IO is pretty simple, pretty minimal. Uh, we have a power button, a USB type C, and a USB 3.0 port. Now, this is a bit too simple for my liking. I would like a couple more USB ports. Um, however, it is nice that there is a USB type C option over here. Now, the entire case, as you can notice, is entirely mesh. Now, there are options to get a tempered glass side panel. And this case starts at around $120 and can max out to $190. So just keep that in mind. There's several options for this and it comes in white and black. Also, stay tuned to the end of the video for a special announcement as well. So I'm just going to sprinkle that in there randomly through the video. So you might have to watch parts of the video. At the back of the case, we have our PCIe slots over here, as well as the rear I.O. cutout for our motherboard, which is pretty nice. I'm happy that the rear I.O. isn't on the bottom or the top of the case, so that is pretty convenient. However, towards the bottom of the case here, we can see that this is where the GPU gets mounted. And for your display port or HDMI, whatever you're plugging into your GPU is going to be coming out through the back of this uh, cut out over here that can be a little bit inconvenient, but we'll cover that later to take off the panels It's pretty easy. They all come apart by simply just pulling on them. They just close in with these tabs It's very easy. It's very nice. Uh, you can do that with every single panel So the top the side front panel over here and the rear panel as well So they all come across as fairly simple to uninstall and install which I like a lot. Okay, so this case actually includes quite a bit of stuff, including a 90 degree angle HDMI cord. You also get this expansion slot in case you're not doing a vertical GPU and you're doing a horizontal mounted GPU. Uh, you can use this instead for mounting a, about four SSDs, I believe. You get zip ties and screws, including another spacer over here. And you also get a little foot rest for the power supply itself. So they say to install this first, which I'm going to do right there. Now, in order to install a full-size ATX power supply, uh, you do need to remove these screws and open up the rear PSU slot over here for a bigger power supply, which is what I'm going to do. Once this is gone, you now have space to install your ATX power supply. All right, I've got the PSU installed here and you can see with a full size PSU here for an ATX layout, it fills up the space pretty well, but you can fit it, which is nice. Now, if you were going to put a radiator over here for liquid cooling, it would be a little bit tight as this is where it would sit right up over here and it would push up a lot against these cables. So if you're going to do that, I would highly recommend doing a uh, air cooler over here and doing the ATX power supply. However, if you were doing a small form factor, an SFX power supply, then you would be able to fit your 240 millimeter radiator over here with the fans included. I, however, will be using air cooling with the NH12S, I believe from Noctua, which is what we'll move on to next. All right, so I've just got the mounting hardware for the NHL12S installed here, and I will install the actual heatsink later on when I have everything plugged in. Uh, I don't want this taking up too much room as of yet, and I need room to manage and plug in cables, so I'll put that in later. As for now, we're gonna take the motherboard and install this into the case. Okay, there are four standoffs right here. This is for mini ITX. This case does have compatibility for DTX, I believe, or DITX, I forget what the name of it is, but it's an extension of the ITX motherboard form factor. Uh, however, you will need a smaller power supply for that. So to install this, you just need to hold this down over here, which is the PCIe riser cable. 
just to make sure that you can get this in securely and pretty much lay it down as such. Okay, so this is a pretty tight fit here. Um, just trying to just trying to sneak this PCIe riser cable in between the power supply and the motherboard is pretty tricky. Uh, you might actually benefit from not installing the power supply first and doing the motherboard first, as it seems as though I have plenty of room to install the power supply after the fact, just so that I can move this down and then install this. However, the PCIe riser cable is rather short and trying to get this in is going to be a pain. I am going to try, uh, we'll see how that goes, but for right now I'm going to screw in the motherboard and then I'm going to try to install this riser cable. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so I ended up taking out the power supply and it gave me a lot more room and see all this free space to move the riser cable, that's great. Yeah, that's much easier and I have a lot more clearance. So I would recommend installing the power supply after you have the motherboard in and potentially any cables that you need to plug in to this corner of the motherboard. Okay, I've got the power supply installed, the motherboard, and everything I need connected pretty much over here, which isn't much. This is a pretty minimal build. However, the next step that I'm going to do is install the front fans over here. I will be doing air cooling, so this should be working just fine with these low profile cables over here. Uh, the reason being I'm using this big of a power supply is just the testament of modularity within the case and I also need 650 watts or more for the 6700 XT that I will be installing into this case. So the fan blades over here will be pointing towards the inside of the case, which will create negative pressure. The reason for negative pressure is because we'll have the GPU on this side in the back of the case, and that will be channeling air into the case and coming back out with these fans. This is entirely mesh, so I think we can get away with negative air pressure. All right, so I have both fans installed. As you can see, we have a good amount of clearance over here underneath. So you can install two 140 millimeter fans if you want, but I went with 120s just to give me a little extra clearance with wires since I have a bigger power supply in here. Now with all this installed, I am going to route my cables or at least pre-route them and get some of them plugged in. Okay, so I routed some of the cables. It was actually pretty easy since I have access to the top, the back, and this side of the case. So it gives me a lot of options to use my hands to navigate where I need to plug things in. There's good cable routing here actually that I wanna point out. Uh, along the sides of the fans here, this creates a natural channel as there is a border with the frame of the case here and between the fans. So you can route a lot of the front IO cables off to this side over here and zip tie these together. There's also tie down points along this side of the case back here. Another little hiccup that I noticed was that the NHL12S was a little too tall of a profile to fit in this case. That's the only downside to this tower form factor is that you're not gonna really fit any sort of decent sized air coolers in here. Now it would fit if I didn't have as tall of RAM slots over here as well as this IO shield. Now. Uh, I do have an even smaller air cooler, which is made by Reven. It's called the Brontes or the Brontes. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Okay, I've got the GPU installed. Well, just plugged in. I haven't screwed it in or anything like that. So as you'll see, there's these two spacers on the bottom here, and there are holes in the spacers here to screw in the GPU. Now the adjustment for the GPU is also available. Uh, if you need to move your GPU up or down, that is a possibility. You can move the riser up one more notch, as well as these guys over here, which are installed with standoffs into the wall of the case down there. This GPU is already at max height. As you can see, there's like no clearance up over here. So I can't move this any further up. Now it will be tight having any HDMI or DisplayPort cable coming out of this thing. And this case does have the compatibility to fit a four slot GPU if you need to. However, this is a 2.75, so I don't need to adjust anything here. And I'm just gonna screw this in. I do wanna add something here. I was only able to screw in one screw into this post here and two into this post here. Now you'll see that there is thumb screws here. Uh, that's just so it was easier to access. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as it screws in. Okay, I got all the cable management done. It's not super pretty, but this case isn't really meant for super pretty cable management. What I mean by that is that you're just fitting a lot of components in a tight space, and most of it's gonna be covered with mesh anyways, unless you 
opt for the tempered glass side panel. Now both of these fans are clear, so it's good to know that those are both clear. You can get really a sense of how this is lining up between the GPU and between the fans. As far as the biggest detriment to this case, it's probably where the IO sits for the GPU, as either the case feet need to be taller to allow for this extra headroom for the cable to come out, or the case needs to be taller in general. Either way, the case would have to be taller unless you go with the small form factor GPU. Otherwise, it's just not going to be suitable for a large GPU. Now, it does come with the angle connector included with the case, which does help. However, if you're running high output monitors like 4K 144 Hertz, you will need to find another type of right angle connector to suit your monitor display needs. So there's not a lot of downfalls to this case. I did have to remove this ram stick because uh it just got a little too personal with the cpu cooler even with the smaller one that i put in there and i got stuck in a boot loop so that's one of the downfalls the other thing is that you need a right angle connector for the rear io on the gpu also i'd like a little bit more robust of an io up over here i would just like a couple more usb ports i just like my usb ports anyways there's a lot of modularity lots of compatibility and options for you to fit whatever hardware you want to in here. If I was to build this all over again, I would go with an SFX power supply and go with a 240 millimeter radiator to get liquid cooling to the CPU, give me some better overhead for cooling. And that would be my optimal build here. Otherwise, this is very easy to build in, in terms of just building in a mini ITX PC. Yes, there's lots of problem solving and trying to figure out what components are going to fit is just going to be a headache as it always is with mini ITX. However, this just makes it a little bit easier since all the panels come off. You can fit your hands into all sorts of tight places, which is really nice. Good cable management, not the prettiest interior once you get all your cables in there, but that's okay. Leave the mesh panels on. I wouldn't go for the tempered glass anyways. It's a nice uniform look. The build quality is outstanding which is to be expected since this is a sister or subdivision of Leon Lee. So job well done by them and it looks very good in black or white. Now onto that special announcement that I mentioned earlier, I am doing a giveaway with SSUPD or SUPT for a black version of this PC case uh, with a PCIe 3.0 riser, I believe. So it will be full mesh, no tempered glass and black and it will be completely free. Now it's only available to those of you that are in the United States. If you want to enter the giveaway, the details will be listed down in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one and let's see some B-roll footage of this beautiful build.